Did sin start with the woman Eve? And is the chaos of today all linked back to one particularly bad decision? Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth, and I'm here to bring you another Bible story of how crime, wars and sin all started. So, like you've probably heard, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and everything in it, and this includes Adam and Eve. And, as a lot of us know, Eve was created for Adam. She was his wife created just for him. God built her from one of his ribs. But this does not mean she was created to be his subordinate. She was created to be his equal and to be his companion to keep him company, so he wasn't lonely. Eve had a perfect life. I mean, imagine your life. If you never had to face death, you had a spouse that was your best friend, and you hung out every day of your life. There was no stress and no arguments. This person never upset you and was always for you and on your side. You just lived in perfect harmony. This person absolutely adored you. Plus, every species of animals, fowl and fish, loved you. You could live anywhere you wanted, come and go as you please, and you never had to clock into work. No bills ever, nor did you live on anybody else's time, just your own. Life was just a perfect dream. Say God told you that you could have all of this. Just don't eat at Frank's Bistro. You would never have to pay for anything. You can eat at any restaurant you want for free forever, but just not at Frank's. Think about how many restaurants there are and all the food selections you could have. You just can't eat at Frank's. Would you do it? Would you eat at Frank's Bistro? I mean, this probably sounds like a reasonable request to you, right? Well, this is Eve's life. This girl was given one rule to follow, and her life is utter perfection as long as she follows that rule. Her days are spent living in a beautiful, lush garden, full of trees and flowers, animals of all kinds living amongst each other, like a lion sharing space with a lamb. There was beautiful smells like jasmine all around. It had the sight and sounds of bubbling spring waters and flowing rivers, total peace and tranquility. Eve gets to spend the days with her husband and best friend, exploring the beauty she is surrounded by. She gets to eat the most exotic, juice-dripping food you could ever imagine. God just told both Adam and Eve, you can have anything and everything you want, sky's the limit. You dream it, you can have it. You just cannot eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, for if you eat of it, you will surely die. I mean, we're talking one, one tree. You know Frank's Bistro. Just don't eat at Frank's. You're given one simple rule. Don't eat it. You will die. If you think about it, it would seem like such a simple request. Hey, I've got all this other food to eat, and it's all delicious. It's all so perfect. So why would I risk eating at Frank's, where it will cause my death? Frank's is pretty food to look at, but is poison to your body. Come on, don't do it. You were even told it's poisoned. It's not a Snow White surprise, but not our lovely Eve. Nope, even being warned, she couldn't resist eating at Frank's. You know, the apple of the tree God said don't eat from. The poison, well, of course she didn't do this on her own, or it wasn't even her own idea. The devil made her do it. You know, you've heard people say, I don't know why I did that. The devil made me do it. Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, whatever you want to call him. It's all the same. He came to her in serpent form and tempted her to eat the apple. He asked her why God didn't want her to eat the apple. Was it because she would gain knowledge of everything? And God didn't want her to know everything. Which side note, would it seem weird to you if a snake came to you and started talking to you? Would you be like, what's up snake? You what? You want me to eat the forbidden apple? Or would you run scared because a snake is talking to you? And... Did other animals in the garden talk? Could she have asked Mr. Lion what he thought about the situation and him be like, no, don't eat it. God told you not to eat it, so I would probably go with that. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyways, so in this conversation with Lucifer, the snake, he says, has God told you not to eat of every tree in the garden? And Eve replies, we can eat of any tree in the garden, but just not the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, do not touch it or eat it, or you shall surely die. Then Satan the snake said, die, you're not gonna die. 
Look, God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So, she ponders this. Now imagine this. She looks at the tree, starts thinking to herself, Hmm, that tree is pretty, and the apple looks delicious, and bonus, it will make me super smart. You're probably wondering by now, where's Adam, her husband and best friend in all of this? the one that's always by her side. Well, he was right there when the bad decision was going down. So, Eve says to herself, I gotta have that. So, of course, as we all know, she picked an apple and ate it. Plus, she had given it to her husband, Adam, and told him to eat it too. And he did. And so, it begins. The beginning of all the sin, darkness and ugliness in the once perfect world. The touch and the bite that cursed us all. And just like that, they died. I know what you're thinking, but they're not dead, really. No, you're right, not at this time. They're not dead physically, but they're dead to all the perfection all around them and suddenly awake to sin. With that bite, they realized that neither one of them had clothes on. They were completely naked. All of the sudden, they knew what it felt to feel ashamed. They had never noticed each other like that before. Now they were super embarrassed to look at each other. So they grabbed some nearby fig leaves and sewed them into clothes to cover themselves up. Just then, they heard God walking in the garden in the nice cool of the day, and they ran and hid from him. Then God called out to Adam and said, Where are you? And Adam replied, I heard you coming, so I hid myself because I'm totally naked. So God said, Who told you you were naked? Did you eat off that tree I told you not to? as if God didn't already know, but he was gonna make them face up to what they did. You can totally imagine this conversation, like one you would have with one of your children who you just caught getting into the cookie jar after you told them to stay away from it. Excuse me, do you have a cookie? Did I tell you to stay away from that cookie jar? What are you doing with that cookie in your hand? And look, now the cookie jar is broken on the floor. Then the child is like, but my friend did it. And you're like, but the cookie is in your hand. So the kid is like, well, I didn't mean to break the cookie jar. I didn't know that would happen. I just wanted a cookie. So you say to him, and this is one of the reasons I told you not to get into the cookie jar. Now there's a mess. You're blaming your friend and trying to get them in trouble instead of you who broke the jar. And now there's no more cookies or a cookie jar. Well, as every child in trouble does, he just simply blames it on whoever was with him at the time. And this is exactly what Adam does. He tells God, well, the woman you gave to be with me gave it to me, so I ate it. So not only is he blaming Eve, he's partly, maybe not knowingly, but partly blaming God for it, because God gave him the woman. So then God looks at Eve and says, what have you done? And Eve explains that the serpent made me do it. Remember the excuse, the devil made me do it. So God turns to the snake, and unlike Adam and Eve, where he had asked them what happened, he just turns to the snake and puts a curse on him. He says, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. So he was telling the snake that unlike any other animals that could and would change to adapt to ever-changing surroundings, the snake would always have to slither around on the ground, eating everyone's dust. Who knows, maybe the snake, once upon a time, had legs, like a lizard or something. Maybe the snake even approached Eve with legs like a caterpillar. I don't know. What do you think? Then God continued the curse on the snake, saying, Because Lucifer decided to use you to deceive the woman, you will serve as the symbol of a constant reminder of what happened here today. So, God intended for the snake to serve as a reminder to all future generations of two things, who Satan is and God's power over him. Now Eve's turn. So God turns to her and said, Your curse will be that you will have great pain when you deliver your children, and your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. And you guessed it. Women now had to suffer this horrid curse of a painful delivery of a child. Even the women who are lucky enough to have a seemingly easy time with childbirth still must endure labor pains. And that's just part of the curse. 
The other part is that women will desire their husbands and he now rules over her. That's right, instead of being equals with perfect harmony, he is now the leader and she the subordinate that has tendencies to want to dominate him. This brings us to Adam's part in the curse. Adam, first off, should not have eaten the apple and defied God by participating in that sin. But secondly, he also sinned by not guiding his wife away. He should have told her it was a really bad idea for either of them to disobey God. He failed as a husband to protect and lead her. So God made it clear to Adam that he was responsible for his choice to eat from the tree. He wasn't getting away with it by shifting blame. So as a result, God said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you not to eat from, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field. He was now condemned to a life of hard labor to work the ground and produce his own food. God then made Adam and Eve clothes from animal skin and banished them from the Garden of Eden. He placed cherubim at the east gate of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the Tree of Life. No one was ever allowed in the garden again. So, there it is, the very first sin of human civilization, soon to be followed with many, many more. So now that you know, what do you think? Do you think this was all Eve's fault? Was it Adam's? Or does it all lie with Satan and his deception? Let me know what you think of this story in the comments below and if there is any other Bible story you're interested in knowing about. Also, if you enjoyed this content, then please hit that like and subscribe button and enable that bell notification so you can always be sure to follow me for a lot more crime-filled stories from the Bible. See you in the next sinful story. Thanks for watching.